The check is indeed fraudulent. He said, I am in Africa. I just confessed. And now he's willing to expose his entire operation if it means leading a better life. So last time I suggested that maybe we could help Emmanuel by selling his secrets. I thought that maybe we could put together another book and, and raise awareness of Nigerian scams and at the same time give people hope for second chances and new beginnings. But apparently a lot of people weren't too keen on the idea. They were saying things like, LOL, you're scamming us. Can't trust him at all. A story ending and asking for money, again. Beginning to suspect how genuine this whole series has been. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh... And I was a little shocked, to be honest. But the good news is that you don't have to buy the book if you don't want to. But if you are interested, stay tuned for an announcement about how you can get your hands on a copy of Nigerian Scammer and gain access to the top secret documents of Emmanuel Lucas. And among these documents are the transcripts from Kayla, Tom, and Denise, the Americans who lost thousands of dollars in Emmanuel Scam. So I thought that I might just give them a call. I thought they might be interested to know the backstory of the guy who actually robbed them. And I was like, what am I doing? If they find out that I have information about the guy who scammed them, they're gonna send the FBI after me. So I've gotta make sure that when I do contact them, I have the money that Emmanuel stole from them. Because I can't think of a greater Christmas present than to hand him a big stack of cash with a note that says, Emmanuel says sorry. But in the meantime, more people are losing money by the minute to these Nigerian scammers. And I had to put an end to it. So I thought I would start with the guy who's funneling the money from the US over to Nigeria, Michael Benjamin. Hey. Who was he and where was he living and did he have any idea how deeply involved with this scam he was? But thanks to Emmanuel, I had his contact information. So I reached out to him through Google Hangout. But what was I supposed to say to him? Hey, you're working for Nigerian scammers? So I decided to play it cool. I said, hello, are you able to do a pickup for me? I had no idea what to expect. He said, hi, Chris did not say anyone is contacting me for pickup. Okay, who's Chris? Is that like an alias of Emmanuel's? I said, I was told you could help. Are you available? And he said, how much? And I said, $50. He said, am I sending to Nigeria? I said, yes. He said, okay, but that is small. Is that what your clients want to donate to Charity Home today? Holy crap, he really does think that he's working for a charity organization. So I said, yes. He said, I'm sorry. And I don't want to go too far today because of doctor appointment. The $50 is small. So according to Emmanuel, this guy gets 10% of every pickup that he does. So it's no surprise that he's not gonna waste his time for five bucks. I said, what is the minimum amount? I have another client who will donate $1,000. And he said, when? I said, later today or tomorrow? He said, yes, I will get $100 like that. And I said, can I have the name to include on the transfer? He said, Michael Benjamin, Los Angeles, California. Oh my gosh, this really is him. I said, do you live in Los Angeles? He said, don't worry about that. Put it there, just the state matters. Okay. He said, do you also work for Donald Charity Home? This is where things get a little messy. I said, no, I have my own charity. I was referred to you. He said, okay, great. How soon are you needing me to do the pickup? At this point, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. I wasn't ready to send him money because I didn't want it to end up in the hands of scammers. So I try to make some small talk. I said, do you work for the Donald Charity Home? He said, I thought you were from Chris. Oh crap, he's on to me. So I said, I think Chris is fooling you. You're actually sending money to Nigerian scammers. He said, not possible. I've heard this times without numbers. I said, it's true. He said, good day. And that's when I knew that I needed to get serious. So I dropped his real name as given to me by Emmanuel, which for our purposes, we'll refer to him as Robert Johnson. He said, not surprised. Chris must have told you my full name. All right, I think I got him. I said, I think Chris is a Nigerian scammer. He said, he's here in the USA here, not a Nigerian. Stop messaging me, please. He still didn't believe me. I said, Chris tried to fool me into sending you money, but I discovered what was really happening. I nearly lost hundreds of dollars. But apparently this guy didn't like me questioning the legitimacy of his line of work. He said, hey mother are you in the USA? Jeez, 
I said, yes. He said, go and tell Trump those things. I'm really not interested if it's not about dollars, okay? Holy crap, what kind of a guy is this? I said, would you consider working for me? He said, LOL, mother You gotta pay me tonight before working for you at all. I said, that's fine. He said, what's your job, mother Well, shame on me for trying to be a nice guy. I said, I'm a private investigator. No need for name calling. He said, what job you want me to do for you? I said, information. How much you paying tonight? Depends on what you can tell me. He said, I smoke, and I'm smoking right now. Is that some information? Now pay me. This guy's a freaking punk. He said, then tell me what the f you want and how much you got. How much you got that made you think I'd leak my boss's information? I said, your boss already leaked your info. He said, blackmailing won't help you nigh. What you got to offer? They must have recruited some druggie in Los Angeles who seriously thinks he's working for a charity organization. He said, investigation agent dude, talk only, no money. I'm literally speechless at this point. He said, ever heard of Camilla? I said, yes. Does that ring a bell, dude? Yes. I'm blocking you right now. Don't go on new hangouts trying to text me, okay? What? How is this guy mixed up with the brown envelope lady? How is this all connected? He said, anything more, investigators? I just received another pickup from a client for $965. And you want to tell me this is a scam, really? Donating now a scam, dude. You're the real scumbag. This Michael Benjamin dude is definitely in on the scam. And he definitely has information. But there is no way that I was going to pay him for it. Chances are that he would just take my money and run. So I thought I would get my information a different way. So I turned to Emmanuel's report and I poured through the information. And I saw his fake company that he was supposedly a part of. And I found the contact info for the recruiting manager, Raymond Scott. Could this be Emmanuel? Or could this be Emmanuel's boss? I had to know. So what did I do? I called the number. And I didn't get an answer. But a couple of minutes later, I got a text message from the number. And it said, hello. And I said, I'm interested in the payroll job I saw listed on your website. Are you still hiring? And then I waited for a response. And he said, yes, we are still hiring. This is about to get very interesting.